Janae. Hey, what's up, y'all? How you doing? Doing wonderful and cannot complain. Sorry it's been forever since I've been back. School's been crazy. It's only week two, so yeah. So talk to us, like, you're back in school. We see your, back, your background's different on Instagram Live. So how has school been this far at Tennessee State? So school's been really great at Tennessee State. I think me and my friend group are just in a moment of trying to remember the memories and just creating just genuine memories because, you know, in a few months, all of us are either going to be back home or in school or just, you know, starting the next chapter of our lives. And, you know, it's been great just being back home at TSU and being with my friends wow. and all that good stuff. I'm gonna tell you this, Janae. That that was so beautiful, and it was better than grownish. I'm telling you, like that 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 <laughs> one little moment of you talking about your senior year and how everything's gonna come together, and everybody's leaving with saving memories. That was better than grownish. That they, they should write a show around your life. I bet I, I bet more than two hundred and twenty thousand people watching. I'm telling you, right. <laughs> so right. Let's do this today, okay? So we last did the episode. Um, put your no, no, we didn't do that episode. We did a boy is a gun. That was the first episode of the Black Lives Matter episodes. We were hoping for more. We were hoping for more depth. And they did give it to us in that episode. And then they went back to the regularly scheduled programming, which is horrible writing. All right? So I want us to unpack the episodes that we didn't watch since we were gone. And then we'll hop to this new episode because, spoiler alert, it ain't a lot to talk about, all right? It like like we could talk about three episodes and be and be out of here in time in time for morning class tomorrow, man. Come on, we have time to sleep because it, it just it's not given. It's not given at all. But Janae, let's start with um, put put your hands where my eyes can see. And I figured out that that was actually a Buster Rhymes song title. They like to put in like song titles, so that was a song title from Buster Rhymes. So give us a real quick run through of that episode. Okay, so Put Your Hands Where I Can See is episode six within season four, which is the season that we're currently on. And Zoe and the crew are at a protest at Cal U. And, you know, the protest was filmed beautifully, but I think that was one of my biggest critiques was the fact that a protest should be brutal, blood, like violence, you know, because that's usually what protest happens. You know, like that just usually happens. So the fact that it was a very much beautiful, nicely shot, they standing still and the police are just yelling at them type of protest was mad weird because it's not reality, you know, like that was just dumb. Um, also moving forward while they're at the protest, um, they get an alert from their phone saying, oh, well, it's a statewide curfew. You have to be back in your dorm at 6 p.m., which also includes Cal U because it's a public university. So the gang then is like, well, half of them want to go to the protest downtown to help still support Black Lives Matter and the person that was shot in that previous episode. But also, the other half decide to go home and just sit on their couch and everything, which Loki is very much performative activism because how are you on campus showing your Black Lives Matter sign? Everything was fine, yet you want to go home and eat your food while your actual friends go protest. So that was a whole other conversation. Moving forward, Javi and Anna are at a taco truck and they're, mind you, they're at a protest protesting the police and Javi says thank you for your service to the police in front of black protesters like that wasn't offensive so Anna kind of looked at him like yo why'd you do that then they eventually get into an argument about the whole thing just different things that they disagree on and they actually agree to break up um, another part of the episode was they challenged Nomi's white fragility. They mentioned white fragility, but some of the talking points I thought were kind of strong, but I know Randall did not agree with some of the talking points. Um, if you don't know what white fragility is, pretty much white fragility is things that happen to black people and you mention to a white person and it makes them uncomfortable and they can't see past their eye view of the world. So that's pretty much all that happened in that episode. I gave the, cin the cinematography was obviously great, but I think it also made the episode weak because you're trying to showcase something beautiful and nice and you can still make beautiful and nice video, but it can still be grueling and can actually convey an emotion of a protest. And it didn't really do that. And yeah, it just didn't give what it needed to give. So I gave it a five out of 10 overall. So with the episode, you have the steam of a weak lead in with mm -hmm. a boy is a gun which they tried to make deep, but it was just, it, it just didn't give the, give the, the bitingness it was supposed to give, right? It was poorly executed lines like this one that is still on my board. Turning a blind eye to the issue not only makes you disrespectful, it makes you a bad black person. It's, it's still on my board. It, it, it's still there. I didn't take it off. So you had that line there, the Kiki young lady, God bless her. I hope she is successful in life, but she's a horrible actor. God bless her, though. We love black women, but no. Um, and it just, 
the first thing I thought when I saw it, you had uh, the guy singing Strange Fruit. And I know that it's been a minute and COVID has gone on for about two years. But back in the day before COVID, BC, we used to have pro base. And you know, sometimes that you have the guy that would come out and he'll sing and then they'll all be lined up still. That is how that first, that's how that first scene felt. It felt like it felt like like like, like a probate on the yard at Tennessee State. Them boys just lock up, lock up, and then and then and then just sing, just singing the frat song, and then and, and then they start singing with them. That's how that felt. Like so, you telling me that out of protest, they gonna let Buddy sing Strange, Strange Fruit, and they just gonna stand there, like all right, we're gonna let them sing. Then all right, we're gonna yell at y'all and tell y'all to go home. That that was so weird. First and foremost, that was so weird, and this was such a Disney view of a protest. Like, like, because literally, I'm, I'm looking at the protest. It was a part of the episode. It was around the time that uh, Kiki got got um, tear gassed, you know, and she's holding her eyes and whatnot. And then they showed a boy riding on a bike with like a flag and it was fire in the background. I'm like, this is such a beautiful shot. The cinematography is so great. I'm like, is this the Olympics or is this 2020 like Black Lives Matter is going down? People getting shot with rubber bullets. Like, I think that, and this is what I was thinking, and, and I told Janae this when we were um, talking through it as I watched it, is I feel as if Gronish is a casualty of COVID. And I'll mm -hmm. explain. Now, that doesn't mean the writing isn't bad. It's, st it's still bad. It's been bad since COVID. And they don't even talk about COVID, so strike against them. But my thing is that they could have done a better protest scenes. They could, they could have done better protest scenes had they had the ability to have more people. I think that they could have done a staged protest of the same ilk that they did with the graduation. I did not like the graduation episode, but did you see how many folks were a part of that graduation? Did you see how many folks were a part of the, the sit-in where they had, you know, the, the, the jail jumpsuits on? That was a lot of people. And mm -hmm. you saw like maybe 20 or 30 people that were a part of that protest. And I get it being a campus protest and Cal, you being the predominantly white institution and possibly not having a lot of black people but it's more black people than 20 and, and some white allies. Like, it, it, it's more than that. So I, I didn't really care for that. I, I, like you said, Janelle, I felt the cinematography made it weak. Like, it, like, it, it, like, it was like putting sugar in coffee, like Malcolm X said. You know, the coffee is black and strong, and you put the sugar in it, and it just ta it, it, ta it takes the strength out of it. That's what I think the Disney cinematography was, but it was shot beautifully. Anna self-sabotages herself so much. Like, listen, Javier is out there. He's holding up a sign right when Buddy's singing Strange Fruit. And they get into an argument over something that week, and they break up. I think that the character of Javier is interesting because while he's not had a lot of time for real character development, I feel as if his character is actually developed. I don't know if, it, if it's the acting, or maybe it was the fact that I actually really liked that Zoe Less episode. That was episode 10 for season three. But I understand Javier. Like, you know, you saw in the earlier seasons that Anna's conservative mentality was meant to be vilified. And that's what Kenya Barris does often. He sort of beats up on conservatives, beats up sometimes on white people and their thought processes, and you see it on Blackish. But Javier was interesting because he's a conservative, but he's likable. You saw him sort of bond with Aaron during the prison, the prison you know, protest. You saw him bond. And he has very likable moments and very sensible takes. And they put him in this storyline where he's limited. I, mm -hmm. would, I will go as far as to say, and I might be talking against myself, I would rather have seen the HIV storyline play out instead of this week's storyline. Because mm -hmm. they were trying to create a dynamic for their relationships around the protest, and they were trying to mimic okay, like the protests are ripping people apart, is messing up relationships because you have, you know, non-black couples. One might feel one way, the other might feel another way. You didn't even go deep into that into that discussion because mm -hmm. you could have had Javier take a hard police stance that you, that you can write based on logic. Well, you know, my, my father's a police officer. My uncle's a police officer. All police officers aren't bad. And, he, and, and she, and she could have said, we're not saying all police officers are bad, but we're protesting the ones that did. It could have been a way bigger argument, way more substantive. Javier really dismissed it, and she still like brought it up. And Javier was the one that was right, saying, "Bro, you make everything a problem, man. I, th I don't think we need to be together." And then she's like, "You know what? We don't." And I'm like, "Does she have her underwear on? Why she just walk out doing her underwear on?" Like, I'm like, "Go put. Are you gonna put your pants on?" Like, cause I'm like, "Bro, like what? what like I thought she just walked out 
basically you know, the bottom half of her had nothing on. I thought that was weird too. And I thought and one thing that was weird as well is they were trying their best to be deep. Oh my God. They were trying their best to be deep, but they were shallow at that point when it came to the white fragility talking point. Like, I understand it. I get it. But they could have write, written that tighter. And I always bring up the talking point that I saw someone say on Twitter that these next two episodes with the Black Lives Matter storylines around the time that I saw it, they said these next two episodes were going to be just regurgitated Twitter talking points. And they were. Because the whole white fragility dialogue was literally them reading off of Twitter. That's what it felt like. Like, there was nothing substantive, nothing that made you be like, okay, yeah, Anna's tripping. Like, Kenya Barris and his writing staff often like to, to beat up on white characters. And as a, black, as a black person that sometimes feels as if we're done wrong in society, I don't mind it. But I want it to be done in a ta more tasteful manner. Because if you look at Hope, I'll go, always go back to Hope because that shows me that Kenya Barris and that writing staff are competent. So Hope, there were two different viewpoints and Junior was paired in two viewpoints that, hey, like, you know, you can see this side, but I'm on this side. And the other side can say, hey, I'm on this side, but you can see this side. Rainbow was like, hey, listen, I'm not saying the police were wrong or were right, but I mean, I don't want to expose Jack, you know, and, and, and the other, well, I've got a uh, Diane, Diane, I'm about to say I forgot her name, but I don't want to expose Jack and Diane to just the horrors of racism. Understood. I'm like, okay, so Dre just wants to, them to be real, but Rainbow mm -hmm. says they're not ready yet. That's a real conversation. That's a real conversation about the talk. That's real. With white, the white fragility piece, they were just beating up on Anna, who had every right to be mad. Every right. You literally are saying you're racist, <laughs> essentially. And I'm not mad at her for being mad. Was her talking point wrong? Yes. But the better argument would have been you are downplaying what those protesters are doing. Not mm -hmm. you have racist thinking, because there's a lot of black folks that say, listen, I am pro-black, I'm X, Y, Z, but I feel as if them, them vandalizing businesses are wrong. Black folks were saying that. Black folks in the media were saying that. Just like the black-on-black -black crime talking point, and what we say in defense is, okay, black-on-black -black crime, but the reason why black-on-black -black crime isn't something that we talk about is because the people that shoot other black people go to jail. So Correct. that's not that, that's not a definitive issue that we're talking about now because that gets handled when, when it's rusty. Is, is it a big thing? It, it is to a certain degree, but justice happens. Justice isn't happening with, with Eric Garner at that point. And we, as, we, as we were protesting and, and saying his name and blacking out our Instagram. Justice didn't happen with Trayvon Martin. Justice didn't happen with, with Eric Garner. So we're like, focus on this. Now I'm black about crime. Same thing here. They're looting the stores. Okay, you had Jazz that had a, a nice, cool talking point of my grand, my, my dad owns a truck, but he understands that if it gets burned down, he understands what it's for. That was an, an all right talking point. I would have loved for her to dive deeper into that. But that should have been the conversation, not you're so fragile because you're white. Oh, you're so emotional. That, that, was, that wasn't the argument. So I look at it, you know? But overall for me, I did not like that, so I give it a zero out of ten. I, I don't know how, what other way to rate it. I give it a zero out, out of ten, Janae. I think that it was shot beautifully, but that's not what I was here for. Like, I, like that that thing made me feel like I was in Disney World. I've never been to Disney World. It made me feel like I was in Disney World at night. You know what I'm saying? Like, at, at night, they start shooting the fireworks, and it's be orange up in the sky. I've seen the videos. That's how I looked during that protest scene. And i got to say this one last thing, Janae, before we move on. How they, how they, I guess, I don't know if you say broke up or how they had Luca find out about Kiki and and Doug was so stupid. Oh my God, that was that was so stupid. Hey, hey, hey bro, I can't fight Kiki. Can I use your phone? Yeah, man, sure. Oh, but the service is down. Let me just text her. Oh, you guys are texting? Like, first and foremost, how do you know what they're talking about? <laughs> like, they were talking in so much code on that phone, it made no sense, and then there was no resolution to that storyline at all. It made no sense, and then they went from the awkward kiss when Doug was pouring out his heart, giving an Anthony Anderson-esque monologue to, hey, we, hey, we texted, and Kiki is Doug's sneaky link. That, it makes no sense at all. Fix it, Jesus. Zero out of 10. Janae, zero, zero out of 10, Janae. Zero out of 10. Well, like, I, I don't know what to say, Janae. Like, like, like what, what, do you feel, what do you feel about that? Do you, do you feel my zero out of 10, Janae? You feel it? 
I do feel you're, so, you're zero out of ten, and I do like see where you're coming from because it's very much surface level, and I feel like they're still dropping the ball on moments that can be deep. Like, I just feel like they start with a great idea, a great topic, or a great talking point, and then it just kind of literally talks like a Twitter thread. So I definitely see your zero out of ten. So let's talk about a piece of light, which is a interesting title for this episode that was last week. I don't see it. Do, do, do you understand that title? I didn't I get that. I was actually trying to get the title before because I typically read titles before I watch episodes to kind of get the gist of it, but I, uh, no, no. They, they, they're, run, they're running out of, out of ideas for sure. They're running out of ideas. But, but let us know about A Piece of Light. So A Piece of Light is the episode seven in season four, and Zoe pretty much gets a new internship with a street designer named Esme Sharp. Zoe and Esme pretty much talk about how a white designer took a style that Esme did two years ago and now is profiting off of it. Um, Zoe and her have the conversation and Zoe mentions having reparations in fashion because a lot of people, a lot of black creators talent gets taken, stolen, or, you know, taken by big companies and all that type of stuff. And there need to be reparations in fashion for that. So then Esme goes and repeats that same sentiment that Zoe said to her in an article. So Zoe sees it and she kind of trips out about it, but her and Aaron have a conversation and he's like, well, you stole it from me. And she probably felt inspired by it and said it. So it's not that deep. Okay, fine, not that deep. Also, wow, before they even have that conversation, Zoe is seen drawing a jacket and the jacket has the letter Z on it and she tells Esme that Z stands for Zoe. So the next time Zoe goes into the office, the jacket that she designed is being made and Esme is taking credit for it. So Zoe tells her friends like, yo, she took my design. Like, is this identical? Like, what should I do? So of course her friends is like, you, you need to confront her. Like she took your design. This is wrong. Da, 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 da. And then as Zoe is going to go in to confront her, she looks at Esme's walls and realize that she is the only woman of color in a lot of these design pictures with other white designers. So she felt compelled to not tear down a woman of color and she chooses not to say anything and lets it go. So, she lets it go. Everything is seen as fine or whatever. And then Luca, who felt compelled to tell the truth, took a picture of Zoe's sketch and the actual jacket and called out Esme for stealing her design. So that's essentially what happens in the episode. Also, there was another storyline with Aaron, who becomes a T, who was a TA because he's in graduate school, but he has the opportunity to do lectures instead of grading papers, which is what he usually does. So he gets to a class and one of the students is very disrespectful, makes fun of his sweater, his cardigan or whatever, all that type of stuff. And he ends up taking off his shirt in front of the class like it was really weird and really dumb he takes off his shirt in front of the class and they make an instagram page for his cardigan his white t-shirt and they pretty much post his embarrassing moment out there and then he gets moved to the midnight class and they kind of tried to foreshadow like his beginning of his like sophomore year because i had two people who ran track a light-skinned girl to uh, a female and a man that was next to each other kind of looking like they liked each other and everything so it's kind of like giving like a, a homage to how they started or how they started grown -ish. um I guess it was cool, whatever. I didn't really get that much from it. And that was pretty much that. So I gave that episode a three out of 10 because I feel like it could have been created completely differently. I don't like the fact that they painted Esme as this copy stealing um, thief or whatever. I feel like if you were going to create a, and have her have a black female boss, like let her mentor her and truly help her and let it just be something else more than, than that. So I didn't really care for that. Or if they were going to do it, like how, Oh, she took her design. It should have been like, well, I will get to that later because that's going to go into the next episode. But yeah, yeah. three out of ten. Three out of ten is what I gave it. Oh, that that, that homage to um, the first season of Grown Ups wasn't good. It was very forced and it was very weird. And like, it's like we we got it, but it was like we didn't get it. I'll get to to Trevor in in a second because I'm gonna need for all the women of Tennessee State to to come for this social experiment I'm about to do in a second. But I love Lala. Um, Lala is a Howard University alumna. She is an alumna of Power as well. Um, loved her in Power. A lot of folks um, really got on her for her acting. But Lala's not an actress. She was a host of TRL. And then she reinvented herself. She married Carmelo Anthony. Then got into pu public squabbles with Carmelo Anthony. <laughs> and became a meme over her son. Because I was seeing a meme going around where it's like what 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 a woman is is talking to a therapist like so what man's causing you pain and then it has like <laughs> Lala holding up her son <laughs> that was so funny to me like my son is the, is the man causing me pain 
Um, but with Lala, I, I love her. I think Lala is beautiful. I've always been a super big supporter of Lala, even before I knew she went to Howard. Um, but here's the thing with Lala on Grownish as Ezra. I understand why folks say she can't act. <laughs> I, I understand it. Because, boy, she her acting, especially the episode tonight, boy, she was acting like a dry, the drywall that's behind Jeanette. I'm telling you. Like, that had more personality than, than Ezra. And I, and I want to bring this up publicly because Jeanette, Jeanette and I had um, this conversation privately. So we say often, I said this with, with, with the Dre character that Anthony Anderson plays when he came in for Daddy Lessons, is we always say that an actor carries a script or he's doing the best that he can with the concept. I say that a lot about, about you know, the characters like Trevor and, you know, Yara as they portray their characters and, you know, Chloe and Halle as they portray their characters. Like, they're talented, they're skilled. Even the actor that plays Vivek is skilled, but they put him in such dumb situations and they give him such crazy lines. But sometimes it goes over but he and they perform it so well because they're so talented. But I want to talk about the flip side because Lala was just was defensively not good as Ezra. She was forgettable, and she's going to be forgettable as the rest of the season goes on, unless they decide to actually cancel the show. So she's going to be forgettable, just as forgettable as Ryan Destiny's character, just as forgettable as Rochelle because Rochelle was pretty was pretty forgettable too, right? So and Cash is Cash was also a very forgettable character because they didn't really truly develop him outside of the basketball player that Zoe thought was attractive. Didn't really develop him that much except put him in situations to sort of give Zoe grief and have Zoe choose between him, um, Aaron, and Luca. So with the character of Ezra and Lala playing that character, it was nothing that she was giving. So the question is this to you, Janae, and I want to really start this discussion. Do you think that an actress can be a bad actress or not a great actress? and the script does her any justice, or are they just a bad actress? Is Lala just a bad actress, or is she, but she maybe have good moments like in Power, but she's being elevated by that character, or elevated by the actor she's next to? You're like, what, what do you think about that? Well, I kind of had a very iffy take on it because there are cases where the writing is dope, but the actor or actress is just terrible. And there have been cases where the writing isn't that great, but the actor or actress is phenomenal because, you know, they have personality or they can just convey that emotion. But I also think it depends on the tone of the show, right? So even when we had our own personal conversation, like in Grownish, Joey Badass is just like a regular rapper, isn't really giving that much depth, is just kind of acting as him which is like his regular chill self. But yet in Power Book 3, I haven't watched it yet, but Randall's watching, he likes it. He says that Joey Badass character is elevated. He has really good moments. He's a very cool actor and everything. But Cronish and uh, Power are two totally different shows. You have a very serious show about drugs and sex and all that type of good stuff. And then you have Cronish, which is a university show that's supposed to be a little bit more adult, but really just gives comedy vibes. So I low-key think that they are just acting within the constraints of the show that they are on. And it's not so much a lack of talent or maybe not even writing while the writing is still bad. I think the tone of the show has a real play in how the actors are acting. And I feel that 100%. And I thought about this, too, as you were talking. A lot of Lala's best scenes in Power were with other characters that were strong actors themselves. And Power had a lot of strong actors and actresses. You had a scene, and I don't want to spoil anybody, so spoiler alert if you want to watch Power. So you had a moment with Omari Hartrick and Lala Anthony's two characters, Keisha and Ghost, where Tyreek... Basically, um, Lala finds out or Keisha finds out that Tyreek stole drugs from Tommy's stash house. It's supposed mm -hmm. to be in the cut, hidden, but Tommy got an Uber and then um, Tyreek, for some reason, ordered the Uber instead of Tommy, which is weird. It's like an Uber. Are they, are they going to find you out in the Uber? Because it's like, are they going to find out like, oh, he sell drugs, y'all go get him. I didn't understand that in Power, but that's a whole other conversation because Power had his moments of being stupid too. And, you know, Keisha puts two together and finds out. So Tyreek is like, hey, I'm going to use my dad to sort of eliminate Keisha. So he was like, man, dad, listen, like, you know, Keisha knows what happened. Could you go handle her? And then he was like, I got you, son. So, you know, Ghost pops up on Keisha and then sort of tries to pay her off to leave and go somewhere else. 
And then it was whole time to an entire thing of like, I'm not no rat, I'm not no everybody that's gonna run. I like that exchange between them. You know, even though I felt as if the scene in the episode was overacted, where you had um you, you had I forgot I forgot the character's name, I forgot their names, but you had no just two bit and spanky. Why okay, I, I was lost for a second in power. Forgive me, power fans. I, I'm I'm thought the biggest power fan ever. But yeah, you had two bit and spanky. They send a hitter to Keisha to scare her to leave because they didn't like her. And like she got cut and shot the guy. Overacted, but it was fine. And then you had parts with Tom, her and Tommy had their squabbles. Tommy's about to kill her. And then the, the scenes with, 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 with Notori Naughton, who's a strong character, Cooper Sacks, the, the, the actor that plays him, strong actors. I honestly believe that you can be carried by other strong actors. At the very least, your like your flaws as an actor or actress can be carried. You know, you don't have to be Tracy Ellis Ross, Anthony Anderson to just be a good character and convey a good character. But and this is no shade to Yara because I love Yara. Maybe Yara isn't that strong of an actress to carry a scene like that because Yara at certain points fades into the background. Like in the scene, like both of them were dull, and maybe Yara at that point as Zoe. Her character hasn't been that broadly defined, but that like the scenes with Ezra were so cringe, and it wasn't a story being told; it was just lines being written. Because my whole entire thing is this too, and now I need you to help me out, all right? So the piece where Ezra steals the sketch, how did she steal the sketch? Esme, Ezra, es Esme, right? Esme. So how did Esme? But, but and by the way, I hope that's not a, not an African name because I think that name is terrible. Like we've talked about that before. As es Esme, Esme, like you can't give her another name. Esme, what the world? But how did she steal Zoe's design? Because that I didn't understand that. Well, it's actually unclear how she stole Zoe's design because Zoe was drawing it in a sketchbook, and we don't know if it was a sketchbook that is provided from the internship that they have to leave there and they just sketch while they're there or if it's her personal one that she can take and come and go as she pleases. It wasn't shown, which I thought was weird because like, how did she even get the design? Especially if Zoe didn't show it to her. And I would assume that as, as May has, I guess a photographic memory because she was drawing and asked her about it, but, and it, it was really just a jacket with a Z on it. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe it was easy to steal. I, I, I don't know. I, like, 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 I think I'm giving too much credit. Cause I'm like, maybe it was easy. To, maybe she has a photographic memory. Maybe, like, 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 maybe she, maybe she went to her house and stole it. I, I, I don't know at this point, but I just felt as if that didn't make any sense to me. And the part with Aaron. So I'm gonna ask you this, Janae. Okay, so Tennessee State is back on campus. We have a lot of amazing folks Tennessee State. And by the way, I gotta cop it up. At Tennessee State. Shout out to Tennessee State. Always supporting. Always supporting. Shout out everybody down there, right? So. Let's say that Trevor Jackson decides to go to grad school at Tennessee State. I'm going to say Trevor Jackson, all right? And he's a TA, a teacher's assistant. And today the professor decides, I want you to teach about Malcolm X, all right? You got Trevor Jackson up there. He's teaching about Malcolm X. And then Trevor Jackson decides to just take off his shirt. What do you think the young women of Tennessee State are going to do or going to feel if Trevor Jackson or Aaron in this case takes off his shirt in class. Are they going to laugh at him? No. Gonna do? Anything, we're going to make a TikTok out of it and put it on TikTok because everything we do at Tennessee State goes viral nowadays. So, so that's what I would do. I would be happy. You'd be happy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 <laughs> I, I can imagine a lot of folks would be happy. A lot of, a lot of the young women at, at Tennessee State would be happy and, and rightfully so. You know what I'm saying? Like, Because y'all are attracted to him, right? So the notion that you have this girl that is cracking on him because he's wearing a hitch sweater sweater vest. Because shout, shout out to AJ from Fairly, Fairly Odd Parents because he was the sweater, sweater vest king, all right? So, you know, you have um, Trevor that's wearing this, this sweater vest as the character of Aaron. And that was supposed to be the big thing. Do I look I'm, do I look, I'm Will Smith and Hitch? And that was what they were talking about. And that was so forced and so strained. Because it's like, bro, like, they're not going to do that in real life. And then didn't we just have the protest episode? So you're telling me that girl deciding after literally it was going down, they getting tear gassed out here in these streets, that she says, you know what, let me make fun of his sweater vest 
instead of talking about Malcolm X, we supposed to be Black Lives Matter. That didn't make any sense either. They didn't tie that back in. And then on top of that, it's very hard and not hard, but it's long to, it takes, it takes a long time to make an Instagram account. Like, because you have to make another email if you don't have an email yeah. for it. You have to, you know, put start the bio and text notifications, all of that. So you're telling me in probably a 50 minute class, this man's talking, you created an Instagram for his sweater vest and you're getting followers. Okay, mm -hmm. that's number one. And Janae, you said some interesting. So another thing about a professor. So how do like you know folks in class normally treat people that act out with professors? So like in high school, like I guess it used to be cute when people you know be disrespectful and a teacher act out. You know the class clown vibe, whatever, whatever. But when you get to college, like that is not a thing. That's not a vibe. If anything, you get looked at mad weird because what are you disrespecting another adult for? Like they they just get paid and work their little nine to five to stay class and go about their day. Like it's not that serious, especially because like in college, like you need recommendation letters and everything. And who's gonna write them for you? Your professors, your deans, your coaches, your advisors, all that type of stuff. So it's mad weird and it's really rude to be disrespectful towards another adult because you're an adult too and if they disrespect you you wouldn't like it so it's highly frowned upon to be disrespectful in class or to your professors and then this is someone that grades your papers too this is someone that's that's literally grading the stuff you're and you're actually like criticizing like like you're actually like you know, making fun of them that that makes no sense you're criticizing the sweater vest i i just don't understand with this show and another thing too let's not skate by this without pointing out the obvious janae he took his shirt off in class and they have video and pictures of it he would have been fired. Forget Dr. Charles Telfy, who made his first appearance this season. He would have been removed from that position because that's indecency all across the board. Yep, yep. That makes no sense. So, I mean, I, I just, I, I felt like it was a very much grownish, like, you know, type, grownish writers type of move where I felt like at certain times they'd be on weed or shrooms. I, I felt like, you know, it's just one or two of the drugs, maybe it's some pills. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, like yeah, they had to be high. Like, hey, you know, what we should do we, you know, we should make Aaron go shirtless in class. I think that'll really be good. Like, they just up there just to smoking. Like, cause it's, and that makes no sense. Cause it's like, how can you be of a coherent, sober mind and decide, yo, we gonna do that? But we, 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 we gonna make him take his shirt off in class, and everybody gonna laugh at him, and then he's gonna talk to Dr. Charles Tophy. He'll say, I like teaching shirtless as well. I, I, I just, I can't with this show. I, I, I can't. I honestly can't. And, you know, the addition of Jazz, trying, them trying to give Jazz a storyline, but them not deciding to put it back with Doug. Of course, you know, you have Chloe that's doing Little Mermaid. She was filming Little Mermaid around this time. I think she's done now. Um, that movie's going to be coming out really soon. I think she's done. Um, but she wasn't able to be a part of the film. And this and the filming happened for this season earlier this year. We saw that, you know, a nod to that because they said with the Black Lives Matter episodes, they were filming that in May, right around the time we found out about the Derek Chauvin trial uh, and, and what was going to go on with him. He, he was going to get sentenced. They said they filmed it around that time. So we know they filmed it earlier this year for which Chloe was filming Little Mermaid. And I hope, hope she does well with that. So they try to give Jazz some depth and some, some color and, and some storylines, but they're doing it in such a wrong way. They have two amazing storylines that I think would travel well in the 21st century. Mental health, and then sexual fluidity. And they could have tried again because I personally didn't like the one they did with Vivek. By the way, Waz with Vivek with still here, but that's nevertheless. We'll talk about that later. But they could have did an amazing thing with gender fluidity because you have the character. What's the character's name? The guy? Uh, that Jazz was with? Yeah. I actually don't know his name. I wrote down old boy in my notes. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Usually I'm really good at characters' names, but I Thing. Not old boy, a hey, hey, old, old, old boy, old boy with hair. <laughs> Cause he got a, he got a blonde hair. Old boy with hair. Like see, that, that's how much we care about his kids. Old boy. So old boy. Okay. So she, Jazz, old boy. You know, are, are trying to sort of talk, and he says he's he's queer, and then you know you don't explore that, you don't sort of talk about that, and then you have the moment where at, at the end of the episode, this time we'll talk about that in a second. But I want to go on and get to that part. He walks into the party with the dress. We're not going to unpack that. We're just going to sort of make fun of them because it was sort of like a way to sort of make fun of them. We're not going to unpack that. Like, that could have been a nice storyline that's very 21st century, and they could have had a second crack at what they tried to do with Favec, which I think they failed. But with the mental health storyline, I really take that seriously because I started getting therapy this year. 
And the stigma of black folks and going to counseling and therapy to get help, that has been broken with this generation. I think that's brilliant because in the old days, in our parents' day and age, used to be, let's just go to church, pray, and it'll be fine. And then we had a lot of trauma that we held in. But this generation of black folks, we have unstigmatized. And I think that, you know, folks like Charlemagne and a, a lot of folks that are leading in mental health. Little Wayne, Little Wayne was talking about mental health with, with, with Acho. Like, I saw that clip talking, he almost killed himself. And I'm like, wow, I, ne like, I never would have expected Lil Wayne, a Millie Lil Wayne, to be talking about mental health. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's like we're at a different place in our discourse. And here you have Jazz that clearly is in distress. She's missing her sister. She doesn't want to run track anymore. She's consistently had these moments where she's trying to put her love for track over everything else, and she's fell with Doug. She fell with her with the other guy she, she was talking to. She doesn't have her sister there anymore. We could really do some real unpacking with the character. And I remember it was episode of the game. And I often go to the game because that's one of my favorite shows. This is when it came back with BET. They did a whole episode with Tasha and Malik where she was in therapy and unpacking everything that she had gone through in her life. And this is a term that I didn't know at that time as I was going to college because that this is around the time they did this episode talking to your inner child. She was repairing her inner child and you saw her revert to younger versions of herself. She was a child and she was like, you know, a young mother that had a baby Malik. And then Malik comes in and he sort of unpacks their relationship over why he's so dependent on his mother. And that was a compelling episode. That was funny. And then it sort of tied into the next episode. It can be, it can be done. It can happen if the character's compelling enough. If y'all think Jazz is so compelling, which I thought is like, like, you know, Jazz and Sky were compelling, like, why don't we do that? I'm not saying make the whole entire episode like how I did with the game and have Jazz and Therapy no episode. I'm not saying that. But we can't be more serious with that. So we just ditch the mental health component of that where she actually had a moment where she was vulnerable with the therapist. And we're not going to talk about that, but we're going to go to a sexual fluidity storyline that doesn't really hold up. I just think it's weak. And I think that what the grownest writers are doing is they're being lazy and we allow them to, we allow them to. And, oh, I, well, I don't, I don't allow them to, you don't either. But, but I think that in general, Twitter and the folks that are fans of this show allow them to be lazy. So overall for me, because I want us to get to this next episode, I would, I will say this. I have a lot to say about the episode. I hate it how they how they did Trevor, um, and, and well, I always say Trevor. I take it personally. It became personal for me. I hate how they did Aaron, um, but I will say that for a setup episode, it was better than a boy is a gun. Give it a five out of ten because I liked it as a setup episode because I thought they were going to go a bit deeper mm -hmm. as they went into the cancel the cancellation thing, and they tried to do a topical type of episode with the next one, but it didn't really go as planned. And we're going to talk about it right now. And Janae, I said it at the top. I think that the grownest writers got this one right because the title, oh, I love the title. I was called Canceled. And boys, times I wish that grownest was canceled. Give me my Thursday back. I'm telling you, man. Give me my Thursday back right before football season comes back, all right? But I, it, it's just, man, Canceled is, is an amazing segue into what we're going to talk about with this episode. So, Janae, tell us about Cancel. All right, so the eighth episode in this season is Cancel, and um, oh, I guess I'll give y'all my rating at the end, but this uh -huh. is... Uh, it, nah. Anywho, so on the opening scene, pretty much this is where, and remember in the last episode, Luca posted the designs that Esme stole from Zoe. So Zoe goes to confront Luca at his loft and is like, you stole my... You took a screenshot, whatever. She says some uh, a weird, insulting phrase. I guess that's like standard Kenya Bears writing, kind of like with fast insults. I thought it was corny and lame and just... Uh. Um, so she goes over there. She pretty much tells him, like, why would you do that? He deletes the tweet, but mind you, the tweet has already been retweeted a lot of times, and it ends up going viral. Viral. Also, we see Vivek just in their apartment, just there, and I'm still confused on why Vivek is here because Vivek is expelled, correct? So why are you still chilling at the crib? Well, the whole entire thing with Vivek's storyline that I discovered is that he paid the, I think, the rent or the deposit on the apartment. So, and they answered it. They were like, "Okay, so you've been, you know, expelled from school." So are we moving out? And they were like, oh, no, it's, it's already paid for. So through his drug money, the apartment is paid for. So And also he's been disowned by his parents. 
So he has nowhere to go. So while he is expelled, that is his place of residence because he does pay the bills. So that was like the rationale that they were going with. So that's why he's, that's that is why the character is there. But from the writing standpoint, we both don't understand why he's still there. Yeah. He's expelled. Because for me, I feel like if you're gonna keep a vic around, why'd you even do the whole expulsion thing? Why wouldn't they just give him community service, keep pushing? But you know, you know, stuff don't make common sense ain't common. So whatever. Any and and school and schooling ain't schooling. They they'd barely be in school. <laughs> schooling ain't schooling. And, co <laughs> and COVID and COVID ain't COVID. Because guess what? Like they don't walk around with no mask. Like COVID hasn't been mentioned all but three times. And the last yeah. time it was mentioned was a boy is a gun. I think about the baby. About, about um, what you call it, about Nomi's baby. Like, that was the only time that COVID was mentioned. Like, the whole protest, nobody had a mask on, for real, outside of them covering their faces as, as they're vandalizing Disney World. That's the only time they had a mask on. It wasn't because, oh, I'm trying not to get sick. Because folks were protesting with masks. COVID don't exist in this world, and class don't exist in this world. Disease and casting don't exist in this world, because Kiki wasn't casting well. The diseases don't exist, all right? But go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and then also in that conversation, Zoe said something that I actually didn't like and I found quite selfish. While Vivek is there just talking, I forgot what they were talking about. Zoe said, you always show me things could be so much worse. And I just thought that was a very selfish line, but it shows that Zoe's a selfish character, that she has a lack of character development because that's just a, such a Zoe thing to say. So then Jazz and Zemi Nova, oh boy, who we don't know his name. Um, and she, of course she thinks it's gay because he said that he came out as queer to his family and he says while he does identify as queer, he is gender fluid and he Fs women for lack of a better word. So <laughs> that's exactly what he said. So then the two decide to hang out. So then Zoe actually goes on live back to the design issue. Zoe goes on live and tries to clear up the situation and pretty much says that, hey, she she actually doesn't say that Esme didn't steal her design. She just says to like not tear down another black woman. So then she ends up canceling herself, which I thought the, was dumb because apparently how it was perceived on social media was that she was chasing clout and saying that Esme stole her design. And that's how, how it was perceived. And then she ended up getting these hashtags and everybody was mad at her, saying all these different things to her. She gets upset. And I thought the whole thing was the dumbest thing because how would you get canceled for you? Like, what? That just didn't make no sense. And nothing makes sense in grown which is why the show's terrible. Moving forward, um, Jazz and uh, the dude, Lean Sky, ends up calling, but she declines Sky's call to hang out with him. Then they eventually go on a date, and she sees him in a dress, and she kind of gets a little scared. Like, granted, he did identify as queer, and she he did tell her that he is gender fluid, but I don't think she realized that meant his attire. So maybe they'll unpack that. We don't know. We'll see and kind of just leave that there. Um, later on, Zoe actually ends up getting fired from the internship because Esme, of course, sees all the viral tweets. And mind you, throughout this whole thing, Zoe like, oh my gosh, did she see it? Did she see it? Like, if your name was going viral and people were canceling you, you would see it. Anywho, 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 we're done with the stupid stuff. So, of course, Esme and Zoe have a talk. Esme tries to make Zoe resign by saying that her work environment will be uncomfortable if she remains at the internship. And Zoe is like, listen, I'll leave, but I want my design back. You stop production on the jacket, and I'm taking the stapler. Emphasis on the stapler for whatever reason. Um, she then goes back home. She pretty much ends the internship and everything, but she feels good that she has her pride. But yet she finds out that Luca and Aaron got into an argument about Luca posting the jacket, and Aaron said that Luca Luca was ruining Zoe's life and Luca was like well at least I defended your girlfriend which is something you should have been doing to get into a dialogue and then Zoe gets upset at Aaron for arguing with Luca and she leaves and goes to her room and she does nothing with the jacket and stays by herself pointless episode like I said <laughs> so what's your rating I gave it a zero out of ten um I gave it a zero out of ten because <laughs> We won her over. This is our first zero out of ten. This is like going to go to Olympus. This is her first zero out of ten in history. Like, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So yeah, it is my first zero out of ten in history because typically I do give points for cinematography and I, and all that type of stuff because you know I look at the show from a holistic point of view. Um, however, like even the cinematography and the vibes couldn't save it. Like, it, like literally nothing made sense in this entire episode. It was dumb. It was very nuanced. And if you want to go into cancel culture, like me and Randall would talk about how we would rewrite the episode. And pretty much, if I was able to rewrite this episode, I would do it to where. Okay, Esme stole the design, fine. But then Zoe goes and 
you know, she tries to confront her about it, but she's like, okay, well, I don't care. I stole her. You're not going to do anything about it. She then makes a statement, cancels Esme, and then Esme is now canceled. She loses her internship because Esme loses the business because nobody wants to work for her anymore. And she feels bad for getting backlash for, for Esme getting the backlash and everything. And she tore down another black woman. That is the episode I think should have been written. It would have been more compelling, more powerful. And I think it could have even been a conversation on how typically whenever Black women are challenged, whether it's sexual assault or whether it's take, getting our intellectual property stolen, how we remain silent for the protection of Black men or Black people over us. Like That's just a thing that Black women typically do. So I felt like that could have been a whole conversation within itself about how Black women typically don't stand up for themselves in the workplace due to wanting to protect other Black people without people looking out for us. That would have been a much stronger talking point than what I saw this episode. So, zero out of ten, I did not care for it. I felt like nothing made sense. I felt like the topic could have gone deeper. And no, not a fan. And I think it's something interesting as well um, because I'm reading this book about um, the rise and fall of UPN and the WB. I've been reading a lot of you know TV books. It's just been piquing my interest. And I see a lot about Les Moonves and Les Moonves was over CBS for a number of years. And he was like a star maker. Like I read another book called Desperate Networks by Bill Carter. And Bill Carter created um, this, the history of late night or story of late night on CNN, that miniseries, great miniseries, by the way. And I was reading it and I saw like Les Moves was like the man. Like he had all the pull, all the power. He knew everything about what was going on at CBS and how to get CBS number one in ratings. And in 2018, Les Moonves had a lot of accusations of sexual assault and abuse against him, which forced him to resign from CBS. And it really made me think like, that's so crazy because when you're in a position of power, oftentimes like people cower to that power because they have bills, they have food and they don't speak out because speaking out oftentimes that's the righteous thing to do, but there's no like justice or money or fund that, that you're, that, that you're, that you're privy to once you speak out. And that was where the episode was going, but they once again decided to cheapen me. All right. And I want to say this real quick before I, I, I go. I don't want to cheapen our review. Okay. His name is Des. Okay. The <laughs> actor's name is Warren Egypt. He's from Hamilton, which I would not know. He's on Disney Plus, by the way. Go, go watch Warren Egypt on Disney Plus. But his name is Des. So Des is a junior on the track team who recently returned to campus after taking a leave of absence. Now, that's what Deadline says. His name is Des. So, All Boy is Des, okay? Oh, um, but, 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 I, but I like All Boy better. That's more, a more interesting name than Des. Oh, <laughs> All Boy is way better. But Janae just took the words out of my mouth. It, the storyline didn't make sense. Like, I think that if Zoe, her design was stolen, and Luca tweets it, Zoe's going to get clout and fame off of that. Because mm -hmm. you have... Um, what's uh, Ezra? What, what's his what's his name? What, what, what's the woman's name? Laws? Es, es Esme? Yes. Esme. So Esme, all right. Esme, this famous designer stole your design, and we have the sketch to prove it. She's gonna be getting interviews, it's gonna be on TMZ. Like they even did a, like Hamas to Charlemagne for Donkey of the Day. So if it's going that far with in the traditional media where Charlemagne's giving Donkey of the Day for it on the radio, you telling me Zoe's getting another from that? She just sitting around her living room looking at the tweets, decide to do a live, and she getting canceled. That's not how life works. That's not how life works because she owned it. In the live, she owned my work was stolen. And Luca's the one that put it out there, but she owned it. So she becomes a martyr to a certain degree. What I would have done is I would have had it where it's other women that have come out and said, hey, she stole my work too. I just want to say anything. She was too powerful. They could have did an allusion to the Me Too movement through that. And it could have been a really witty way to look at it because it would have been looking at it through a different lens because you look at it through sexual power, through like how they, the things that were alleged against Les Moonves. And hey, you know, I don't want to report on because I want to keep my job. And it was even points where allegedly they were saying in, in some of these suits that it was women that he approached on the show. And, when, and once they rejected his advances, their characters were written off of the different shows. So it's like, oh, well, I don't want my character to be written off of, so let me entertain him. Or let me find a way around that. I'm not going to directly confront him or say anything because I don't want to lose my position. It could have been the same thing here because it's the same dynamic. 
because the dynamic doesn't change because it's power. If it's sexual power or, the, or, or, or a powerful position that you need to graduate or that you need to succeed in, in the industry, it's the same power because that power is something that's crushing you and dominating you and saying, listen, I'm, 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 I'm going to tap out because I'm not going to get into this fight because I want to protect myself. So it could have been something that they could have brought the comedy out of it because they can do that. But it could have been something real because, like you said, not only is it black women that go through it, and they go through it way more than, than, than we even can talk about, but young people. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's situations. I, I've been in a situation like that. Now, granted, did I speak out? I did speak out. <laughs> I did because I'm a rebel. However, did I get the byproducts of it? Oh, for sure, 100% where my reputation was, was was scarred to a certain degree. People talk about how I'm back. It's happened multiple times, especially when it comes to school. Like, I'm, I'm not going to lie Like, even, and I'm, I'm going to say this with my fourth family hoodie on, uh, I told the story about, you know, how I reported my professor that got out. And I got treated funny. You know what I'm saying? And while I, while everything was good and I never got nothing disrespectful from her again, I got treated funny. People switched up on me for that. You know what I'm saying? And they would still talk about, oh, what Randall did. Randall's a snitch. Like, it, 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 it turned to that. So in my mind, I'm thinking, bro, like, should I not have said anything? That's a, that's a real thing that happens, and you, and you, and you ruin it. Like, they, they, they ruin something that's real, something that you can sort of poke holes at and poke fun at to be lazy. It was funny moments in the episode when you had um, Anna that was betting that, that Zoe slept with Joy Badass. That was funny. Um, the, the Rochelle piece didn't make sense. How, did, how would someone know that the Zoe Joy Badass rumors happened? How would someone know that? that? That didn't make sense to me. How would someone know that, Zoe, like that that, that was the rumor in, inside? Was that an intern that tweeted that? Uh, I don't know. It had to be just because that. Okay, so in the episode, Rochelle tweeted, oh, she also stole my man when people were like, comedy saying she was chasing clout. So that was funny, obviously, because Zoe did take Rochelle away from, you know, Aaron did take um, Zoe away from Rochelle. I mean, you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. Zoe took Aaron away from Rochelle. We got you, yeah. Like, that did happen, but the only way somebody would know about the Joey Badass situation is if you worked with Zoe and you work with Joey Badass, like you know what I'm saying. So, or your friends with her, or your friends with her, because because she, she told she did tell them, and it was a part of the circle. And another thing too, I'll say I didn't mean to cut you off, um, but Zoe seemed to have a lot of followers back in the day because Cash was this verified you know basketball player. And then when Cash outed her for being a virgin, she had like a lot of folks that were liking her photos, liking her pictures. And then in the montages of when she was trying to be relationship goals with Luca. It was a lot of folks watching that live. Why is it only 98 now? Like, yeah. it's certain things, and, and it's certain things I see that don't make sense. So now Zoe ain't popping no more when it was points in time where they would do a social media illusion and she had a bunch of followers and a bunch of views. That didn't make much sense to me. Um, and I will end on this because we're, we're running short on time. I hated how they did Aaron. They are disrespecting Aaron to give Zoe a win. How Zoe got a win. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I, I, st I started back watching wrestling, all right? I started back because I got, I got a little bit of nostalgia. I watched it with, you know, my brother. My brother's still a fan of wrestling. I watched SummerSlam with him. And my, my dog, CM Punk, that came back to wrestling. My dog, CM Punk, <laughs> came back to wrestling. That's my dog. And he's on AEW. So I started back watching. And there'll be times, Janae, well, you'll have like the good guy, like the John Cena, because he mentioned because you have a vet bitch in John Cena. You got John Cena, like a Hulk Hogan, that's saying he's a they're, they're good guys. So they're getting beat up. And you're like, man, how can they stand? Like, how can they do all this? And then you have a moment where the hero gets up. They do their move. They call John Cena's moves the five moves of doom. And then he does the finish and then pins the opponent and wins. That is literally what Zoe did. Where it's like, okay, so this girl. Basically, now people are turning on her in, in the scope of this, this storyline. We're going to follow the storyline logic. She's just been turned on. I think she's doing this for clout. They think she's lying, all the different things. Now, Ezra wants to talk to her, and Ezra basically is going to force her to quit. How does she get out of this? Because she's not going to get fired, or she's going to resign. How does she get out of this? Oh, she's going to blackmail Ezra. Or, 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 or what's the name, Esther? What, what's the name? What, what's the name again? Es Esme. Esme, I, I, at this point, Esther, Esme, Easter, like, like don't matter, son's in for at this point. But, like, what, 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 with, with Lala's character, like, they had her blackmail her to get the design back and stop the production of the jacket. 
How is how does Zoe have feasibly that much power when according to the storyline, her her storyline is her her story is shaky anyway because people are thinking she's lying anyway. Oh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna be more forceful and say you did. You already did say she did. <laughs> you already did. But you were trying to save face to protect her to protect your position, which already would have been lost because don't act like she didn't see it. You know what I'm right. saying? Like so, it's like that didn't make sense to me. Like Zoe always finds a way to win, man. Like you think she's down and out, her fashion dreams are done. I'm gonna blackmail you. What what would you do in this situation? I want my I want my jacket back. And she gets the jacket and the sketch. I, like I think she had the sketchbook too, which I'm like, I don't know how she got how, how the sketchbook got into um the, the uh, Lala's hands. I, I just don't really understand that. And then with even even with Luca, Luca's looking out for her. she has the, the barrage of insults against him, and he deletes the tweet, like that's gonna make it change. And then Aaron is understandably mad. You would want your boyfriend to defend you and, and be passionate about you. And they play him like he's a sucker. They play him like, yo, you're doing too much. You're trying to control Zoe. No, he's not. He's understandably mad because he puts you in a situation where you did not want to report the woman, the boss that stole your work. And he put, he put it out there without your consent. He's upset. And then can we just talk about this too, Janae? Because I, only I'm going to bring this up because first of all, I'm probably the only guy that watches the show. People watch football, but also we have to do this too. We have to be sensitive to the, the male characters on the show. Luca came in there talking crazy to Aaron. Now the Aaron pop it off. He did. He, he said something to him, but Luca took it another level where Luca was being hockey disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? Well, like, like, well, Luca is often disrespectful. Luca's often disrespectful. But like with this one, he was mad disrespectful, basically saying that, listen, you should have spoke up. He was like, hey, man, keep man, keep my girl's name out your mouth. You know what I'm saying? And Aaron was very, had a very legitimate reason to have that gripe. So it's not like, like, like Aaron just went into the game room and said, what's up, bro? Square up. You know what I'm saying? I'll go right back to the game. You know, I love the game. So I remember you had the moment where um, you had um, Melanie's character in the game it was, a, it was the situation where they had broken up and Melanie wanted Derwin to be jealous. So it was a moment where you had Derwin, and you had Derwin, Malik, and Melanie in this fake love triangle, and then Derwin goes, goes into the practice facility and jumps on Malik. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, you, you, you're dealing with my girl. You know, I'm going to beat you up and all this stuff like that. They, they had the moment where, where he attacked him. And it's like, that's not what Aaron did. Aaron was there playing some gardening game, which was so weird. That was so not funny. They're playing some gardening game where they grew in okra. And then, like, Luca comes in and chose violence. And then Aaron was really going to choose violence with him. How is Aaron wrong for that? Like, Janae, don't you, don't you want your boyfriend to stand up for you? I'm, I'm confused. Do, do you identify with Zoe? I'm, I'm confused. No, facts. I definitely, um, I didn't really get Zoe's point. Like, I guess, I, I didn't really get Zoe's point at all. I'm not going to lie. Because if I knew that my ex posted my current boyfriend stuff and he vividly told me that he did not want his boss to find out the situation, I will be visibly upset because you just respected my significant other's privacy. And I get, you know, y'all designers, y'all got a code or whatever, but she, they said they didn't want that to happen. So respect that. So I definitely didn't understand the argument. I feel like the argument was also just a way to get Luca and Zoe back together, which was dumb, which is dumb in my opinion. Um, yeah. It, it's, it was dumb as a whole. <sighs> this episode, zero out of 10. Zero out of 10. I could go on and on, but Janae said it all for me with the storyline. But I, I just I just want grown to be better. And I hate, I hate this freaking show. I just want it to be better. And guess what, Janae? It's not going to get better. So let's, let's end it off by reading about episode now. We done went to episode, episode six, episode seven, and episode eight. Episode 9 comes on September the 2nd, 2021. At a luau party, Zoe accepts Luca's help securing a new internship, making Aaron uncomfortable. Doug and Keela navigate a roadblock in their relationship, but Vec tries to help Nomi and Anna take their minds off the LSAT law school aptitude test. Now, let's start with the most questionable part of this description. And granted, their descriptions have been very off. Like they that they'll describe something that don't even happen in the show. So Doug and Keela navigate a roadblock in their relationship. We just met Kiki. Like Doug said he was not gonna talk to her anymore because of Luca. 
and now they have a roadblock in their relationship after this episode. They awkwardly spoke to each other like during the scene before Luca and Aaron got heated and they were talking to Aaron and Luca respectively to calm them down. And, you know, she left with Luca and then Aaron continues to play the game. Not Aaron, but, but Aaron and, and Doug continue to play the game. What relationship roadblock? What relationship? I'm yeah, they're together. Like, even in the previous episode, Doug told Luca that he's not going to mess with him because he don't want to ruin their friendship. So when did they become an item? Confusion, right? Doesn't make sense, right? Nothing does in this show. <sighs> so at a luau party, Zoe accepts, Zoe accepts Luca's help in securing a new internship. How do you think this storyline is going to go? Because I have a feeling how it's going to go. Well, the theory is after everything happened with Esme, Zoe needs, still needs to find an internship. They'll give her another opportunity to find one. She'll still be able to graduate. Luca knows somebody from somehow, some way, helps her get the internship. Somehow, Zoe tells Aaron, oh, I got a new internship, babe. Well, how'd you get it? Oh, I got it from Luca. Oh, Luca. They get to arguing about Luca. Luca goes to Zoe and vice versa. They have a conversation. Eventually, they end up kissing. Or actually, Luca will probably blow up Zoe at first. And then he'll say, just, she'll say, just talk to me, dude. And then somehow they'll get back together or something like that. Um, essentially, it's how the episode's going to go. And then I don't really know what the Doug and Kiki storyline's going to look like. I think it's dumb anyway, but whatever. We'll see what that turns out to be. And then Vivek is, is going to give Anna and Nomi drugs. It's <laughs> what's going Yeah, and which is, I, I, hope it's, I hope what I think is going to happen doesn't happen because I feel like they're going to make them take the drugs before the LSAT which is the dumbest thing that you can do like for example my bond sister right now she, she just took her LSAT and everything and she was studying and prepping and walking and praying and do all this type of stuff to prepare for it so I know people that are taking the LSAT GRE MCAT and they're putting their like hearts and souls into passing these tests so they can become lawyers and doctors and etc so why would you take drugs before you take the biggest test of your life and why and why is the vex still there is is question um, makes no sense ah. I, I like like I, I love how the character development of Janae I, like Janae is coming over to the dark side at this point like she like, like she's joined the Nets like I'm telling you like it's like you, you you basically hate this show now so you can't be like well I sort of like because I, I remember it was one time I'm like this episode is terrible well I give it a six out of ten like, I'm like <laughs> I really did like girls at one point, and I really like saw the potential and everything. And I low key can say that I probably was blinded by the fact that I like Yar Yar my celebrity best friend. I love Trevor Jackson. I love D. I love Chloe and Holly and everything. So like, and I think the star power, just the fact that like it just it looks cute. It gives good vibes. Like I saw a TikTok that said Grownish just gives vibes. That's it. Like that's why we still watch it. So I can definitely say that I was blinded by that. And it I mean to me at one point in time it was good. Season two and season one was pretty good to me. I mean I was in high school senior in high school so you know i was 18 who what did i know about the world but now it hasn't really grown much it's been just a show to keep yara and my other black creators pay which i'm down for but it's still not quality content like they they, they are holding my thursday nights hostage and i, I need them to let me go <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> they're holding my thursday nights hostage but Honestly. listen we're, we're looking for a, a like a better second half of the season because I, I i will believe that although these ratings numbers are terrible they're gonna give it um a send-off where they graduate they're gonna give it that send-off but i hope that they close it out better and i hope they don't end up bringing zoe and luca back together and i think that we all just hate this show at this point and we hate that they're not trying because going right back to what a julie bean said that's a showrunner they feel as if there's not much to talk about so they're like, you know what? Let's give them relationships. Let's give them half-hearted storylines about cancel culture and racism, and they'll be fine. <laughs> like that, that, that's, that's how they feel at this point. Uh, they'll be fine. They'll, they'll still watch it. Because no, no, no one wants to join me in my boycott, so they, they, they'll be fine. Yeah, that's, that's how they feel. But overall, Janae, that is it for this tumultuous ride down this crazy show. Where can we find you on social media? All right, y'all. So if you want to follow me on Instagram, you can follow me at nay.themogul. That's N-A-E dot the mogul. And on Twitter, just regularly nay the mogul. Yes, yes, yes. Janae, have an amazing year. You know, we're going we're gonna to talk to you again next week, hopefully. But have an amazing year. I know it's your senior year. You know, you're going to kill it. Go out there. You're going to be successful. Hopefully more successful than Kenya Barris. We need you at this point. <laughs> <laughs> 
We need you. We need you. We need you to save us from 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 light skin universe. Okay, we just save us from that at this point. Promise, promise, I will. <laughs> All right, Janae. We'll see you later.